All right, welcome to the CARS introductory video. Yes, I said CARS. CARS stands for Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills. Um, this section of the MCAT is designed to assess your critical thinking skills. So let's walk through just the basic um, design of the of the exam what's expected of you and what this section will contain. See, CARS, Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills. All right, so this section is a little bit different from the natural science and the psychology, sociology, public health based section of the exam. There are fewer questions, only seven fewer, right? This section has only 60 questions while the other sections have 67. Um, in addition, this one is a few minutes shorter. You have 90 minutes here as opposed to 95 like you do on the other sections of the exam. This, in terms of time, that's the difference. Now, another major difference here is that there are no freestanding questions on this section of the exam. All of the questions will be related to the passages that you have to read. So you'll have 60 questions. You're looking at about, on average, 10 passages. You'll have to read the passages and answer the question. There is no expectation that you'll have prior knowledge about the information in the passages. So the question a lot of students have is, can I really study and prepare for this? Absolutely. You can teach yourself how to think critically or how to improve um, through practice. You can improve your critical thinking um, skill set. So don't think that whatever score you have on a diagnostic exam, for example, that that's the score you'll get. You can improve through practice, learning how to go through the questions and look, um, not the questions, the paragraphs and finding the answers to the questions. Um, so let's talk about the types and styles of questions a little bit later on. Is this part of the MCAT just reading comprehension? Not necessarily, because what happens on this exam is, as you'll see later, you have three basic types of questions. One type of question, from foundational comprehension. So yeah, the basics, the things that you learned in elementary school that were reinforced in middle school and high school and in undergraduate education, right? But there's more to comprehension. You're going to be asked to synthesize ideas. You're going to be asked to formulate conclusions and extrapolate based on what's presented to you there on the computer screen within that passage. So it's a little bit more in depth than reading comprehension. So yeah, the objective of this portion of the exam. It's really to test your analysis, your analytical, right, and critical thinking skills. And this is done using passages that are primarily, or I should say exclusively, not primarily, from the humanities and the social sciences. Interesting, because most of you are going to be natural science majors, so you're going humanities, oh no. Why are they doing this? Think about it this way. As a physician, part of your job will be what? Dealing with people, um, staying relevant um, in the literature, just being a social person. As an MD, you don't work by yourself okay, in the library in, uh, by yourself sitting. That's not how it works. So remember, a part of the undergraduate education, a part of that curriculum, it's all about being balanced and well-rounded. This is your opportunity, opportunity to demonstrate that you can read information from other disciplines and still perform well to show that well-roundedness that a lot of these admission committees are looking for. That's why it's here. So in this section, you'll analyze, you'll evaluate, and you will apply information given to you in these passages from a wide range of social sciences and humanities di disciplines. So it's social sciences and it's humanities. In a minute, I'll show you what um, some disciplines are specifically within those two categories. So you can expect passages, remember it's all passage-based, ethics, philosophy, cultural studies, and even some population health. The population health can deal with things like epidemiology. So at least if you have that, again, public health background can help you here as well. Um, ethics, if you've taken courses in that, if you've done research, you should be familiar with ethics. So you can get anything from this. Let me say this, um, if you don't read a lot, it's okay, don't panic. What happens to most of us as we go through our um, college educational process is we don't read anymore. The only thing we read are textbooks, if, if we even read those. And so as a result, we're not really reading, um, for instance, well, newspapers aren't really that popular anymore, right? But we're not reading articles. Well, some of us read blogs. So if you're an avid reader, you'll probably benefit, or this uh, section might be a little bit easier for you. If you're not, it's okay. That's why you plan ahead you start practicing early so that you can improve. These are the kind of skills that will not improve overnight, but they can improve 
if you just spend and commit and devote the time that it takes. So the humanities include a wide range of subjects from architecture and art to dance and ethics, literature, music, philosophy, popular culture, religion, and theater. So you can have a passage that describes a concept or event or um, people, famous people in any of these categories. Likewise, or similarly for the social sciences, you have anthropology. So you could be talking about um, ancient man or evolution of humans, archaeology, cultural studies, economics, education, geography, history, a lot of things, psychology, sociology. It's fair game. So you can possibly have a passage about anything except the natural sciences. So you see how this section, it's different. In the natural science section, you have passages that are typically research-based, and you have to apply that research and analytical skill set to it. Here, you have passages that are not research-based. They're not um, science-based. But you still have to think critically. So can you think critically outside of the realm of science education? That is what this portion of the exam is asking. There are no foundational concepts here because it's different. You're just reading passages. And of course, every version of the exam will be different. Um, so you'll get passages. It'll be very stylized, some of the passages. It's not that technical journal style article that you've probably become familiar with. Each passage will be about five to 600 words. That's just enough to make it difficult for you. 400 words would have been too easy. So they said 500 to 600, because now, after you read the first paragraph and the second and the third, you'll, you'll actually have to go back and forth and back and forth to fully process what um, is meant by the author and what the point is. So the skills that you will have to demonstrate are foundations of comprehension. Can you read the passage and truly comprehend using the basics that you were taught? Reasoning, absolutely, within the text and furthermore, reasoning beyond the text. Let me talk about these skills briefly before I go into detail about them. You're embarking on a, on a journey to become a physician. Absolutely, you're going to go to medical school and you'll have two years or so of coursework. But a major part of medicine it is um, and one of the reasons medicine is so different from other disciplines. Medicine is practice based, right? So you have to think about it, okay? When you're a physician, you'll have to make reasoning or decisions or judgments a lot. And not everything will be so clear cut for you. And one of those things will be reasoning beyond what's given in front of you. you know, for instance, let's say you have to make a diagnosis of a patient. You have a chart. You have um, previous test results. They're right there in front of you. Think of that as your passage. But then you get new information about the patient. And so now you have to take that new information and combine it with everything that's already there to make an inference, to draw a conclusion, to make a suggestion, to treat that patient. It's the same thing when we talk about the structure of this section, uh, of this, um, this <laughs> the structure of this part of the test. Yes, it's not natural science. Yes, it's not physical science. You know, it's not psychology either. It's just humanities and social sciences. But can you demonstrate that you can read information and actually answer the questions based on what's in front of you, and also extrapolate and go beyond what's in front of you to choose the correct response? So it's a skill set that you need to be a very good position, and that's why you're being evaluated for your critical thinking on the CARS section of the exam. For the foundations of comprehension, basic comprehension, main idea, tone, purpose, um, those kinds of things, word definitions, what does this word mean in, par in paragraph one, in, or things like that. Um, making inferences, you have to be able to draw conclusions from sentence structure, word choice, rhetoric, just a general style and arrangement of the passage. Reasoning within the text, very important. Can you demonstrate comprehension by integration? And what this means is it's easy if I direct you to paragraph one to find the, um, the answer to a question. Then you know I should go to paragraph one and the answer will be in paragraph one. But what if the answer to the question requires paragraphs one, paragraphs three, and paragraphs one, three, and five? So in that case, I need to integrate, okay? I need to use different parts of the passage to answer a single question. It is a very important skill. And you have also, even more important, reasoning beyond the text. Can you apply new information to the passage, new concepts, new events, and use those new events to build on what's already given to you? And that goes back to the example that I gave you about the physician. Think about that. As a physician, you have to treat patients. 
not everything will be clear cut. Not every patient will walk in with a, my throat hurts and you look back and you see the signs of strep throat and you order a test and you give them some antibiotics. If it was that easy, medical school wouldn't be such a challenge. There's so much more to it. And so you have to be able to reason beyond the text. You have to demonstrate this ability to that admissions committee. That's why this is on the exam. You must be able to weigh and evaluate the outcome of introducing new information. If you're going to make a diagnosis for a patient, you have to be able to do that. And so even though this section doesn't deal with clinical medicine or any kind of natural science, it's the same idea. It's a skill. Remember that a skill set, when you, for instance, if I say to you, I'm, a very, I'm very good at computers, I'm not saying to you I'm only good at using computers when I'm in a biology class versus when I'm in a business class. If I say I'm good at using computers, it means that I should be able to take that skill set with me into a new environment. That is what we're saying with the reasoning beyond the text. So in terms of the breakdown of the questions, you will have 30% foundations of comprehension, 30% reasoning within the text, and 40% reasoning beyond the text. And you should not be surprised because the ability to take new information and add it to what's already there, to draw a final conclusion, to make a prediction, for instance, you will have to do that. That's very important. It's a very important skill for a physician. 50% of your questions will be from the humanities and another, well, another, the remaining 50% will be from the social sciences, okay? So that's it. That's the breakdown of the exam. Three um, basic skills, comprehension, reasoning within the text, reasoning beyond, um, no, uh, foundational concepts, and the layout, five to 600 words. There's the content, humanities and social sciences. Remember, you will analyze evaluate and apply, 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 apply. After you've taken a few practice tests, you'll see what areas need improvement and those are the ones you should do. You can't, you should do, well, you should do them all, but those are the ones you should focus on. So it's not just reading comprehension. It is the critical analysis and reasoning skill section or the car section of your MCAT. And I believe you can do very, very well. Pace yourself, give yourself time to practice. You can improve your critical thinking score if you devote the time and dedication that it takes. Wish you best of luck. I know you can do it and happy studying.